Kenamo tassa bagovato warahato sama sambuddhasa Namo tassa bagovato arahato sama sambuddhasa Namo tassa bagovato arahato sama sambuddhasa Pay homage to the blessed one Dear friends Today, April 29, 2023, at Dhamma Meditation Center. So I would like to deliver Dhamma talk about the five hindrances. So when you meditate, so how five hindrances arise in your mind and how will you, how will you abandon them? So I quoted actually from the Sutta number 10, the five hindrances. So five hindrances means we call him Pali, Pancha, Nivarana. So Pancha means five, Nivarana means hindrances. So there are five hindrances. So number one, Kama Sandha. So Kama Sandha means sensual desire. So through the six senses, we have the six senses, eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, and mind. So through the six senses, the five, uh, the sensual desire rise. When you meditate, you know, so when the sensual desire rise, then what will you do? So you have to use the six hours, or I call it actually harmonious practice. So, the, because I am harmony with me and mind, mind and body. So, when I practice meditation, I am harmony with my body and mind. And also, you can see the right effort. So, the Kama Sandha, sensual desire, and number two, Vyapada. So, Vyapada means hatred, aversion or ill will. So when you meditate, the aversion may arise in your mind. So that moment, what will you do? So you have to use the, the six hours there. So the six hours, we also call right effort. The recognize it when unwholesome thought arises in your mind. Like a hand, Kama Sandha, Vyapada, Tinamidya. Tinamidya means sleepiness and dullness. So in, in the scriptures, you can find the translation slot and topper. So I used the word for the sleepiness and dullness. So when you meditate, you know, someone just uh, five minutes, after five minutes, you feel so sleepy. You know, right? So you feel sleepiness and dullness. So maybe I should not practice one hour. Uh, tomorrow I will see. I'll practice two hours, two day and a half, one hour and a half. My uncle, can you hear me? Very good. <laughs> so dullness means maybe tomorrow I'll practice two hours. Today, only one hour and a half. So when you, that sleepiness and dullness arise, Tina means sleepiness. Dullness means, uh, Tina, midda, midda means dullness. And the next one, Uddasa kukucha. Uddasa means restlessness. Your mind go here and there, here and there, always around, you know, so you are practicing here, your mind is in, a, in your country, you are remembering your family members, you are remembering your parents, so mind go everywhere like monkey, you know, so it's called Uddasa, Kukucha, that means anxiety, or we can use remorse, <coughs> so I want to keep my mind in one place, but my mind never listened to me. I want to keep 
hindrances hey, should not rise in my mind. But still, I cannot control my mind. There is no control. You cannot control the mind, you know. So, so restlessness and anxiety arise in your mind. And then last one is called Visikicca. So Visikicca means doubt. So here you see our friends came from the different states and different countries, right? So we came here from far away at Dhammasukha Meditation Center for practicing meditations. So after practicing one or two days, this technique is not the right technique. It doesn't work. Doubt rises in your mind. What Bhante Satchananda is teaching? This is not the right. Doubt rises about the teacher. What Buddha said in the scripture? This is not the right. Doubt rises about the Buddha. You know, so whenever any doubt arises during the practice, please use the six hours there. So this is the in brief. So finish. <laughs> <laughs> so not finish yet. <laughs> this is just a brief, okay? So in the Sutta number ten, the Sutta number ten, the blessed one explained there were the five hindrances, pansa nivarana. How does a person avoid observing mind objects? As a mind objects, here a person avoids observing mind objects as a mind objects in terms of the five hindrances. So as I explained, what are the five hindrances? And how does one abide observing mind objects as a mind objects in terms of the five hindrances? Here there have been sensual desire in them. A person understands. There is sensual desire in me. So when you practice meditation, you know sensual desire rise. So you understand means you know it. You know because your mind is pure that moment. So as Dalson yesterday mentioned, what is the meaning of mindfulness? So remember the things that moves one thing to another. So how is your mind is moving? from one place to the another place. So when you were very, very clearly see and understand, this is the mindfulness. Okay, so hindrance is arising, I know it. So you have to welcome the hindrances. If you think that these hindrances is enemy for me, so should not come, hey, should not come, should not rise my mind. No, allow them. As a friend, so we are our loving kindness practitioner, right? So we have to allow all the hindrances as, as, as our friend open your mind. So then, when you see hindrances arising in your mind, just use the harmon harmonious practice, the six hours there. So many people, you know, especially who are coming for practicing meditation. They complain a lot. They said, Mante, you know, hindrances disturb me a lot. Because of hindrances, I cannot practice meditations. I want to stop the hindrances. But is it still arising? So remember, until you attain the Raham, the hindrances rising and vanishing. Rising and vanishing. Rising and balancing. So what do you have to do? You have to use the six hours there. Six hours there. So more you use the right effort, six hours there, you will see your hindrances will be weaker, 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 weaker. Then eventually you'll see one, uh, you, 10 minutes, no hindrances arising. 15 minutes, no hindrances arising. 20 minutes, no hindrances arising. You know, one of my students, he also, he was the first practitioner at Dhammasukha Meditation Center. He lived in Westchester in New York. So he came for Tantra's retreat at Brahma Vihara Meditation Center.
So when I was taking interview, uh, I took the interview from him. How long can you sit? One day, two hours. One sitting with a movie. Okay. How long can you sit with a distraction? 20 minutes. No distraction. Can you imagine? 20 minutes. He's really a very good practitioner, you know. So 20 hours, no hindrances. That means you are in the jhana. One of the jhana. So I will explain that after tomorrow about the jhanas in detail and how will you understand what are the meaning of the jhana and how many kinds of jhana and how will you understand you attend the first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, fourth jhana. I will explain after tomorrow because tomorrow will be the Delson talk. Right? So the rising of the unirrigent sensual desire occur when one's mindfulness become weak. So whenever your mindfulness is weak, then hindrances you allow hindrances my friend please arise in my mind then hindrances will arise because your my your mindfulness is very weak so when your mindfulness is very sharp very very pure the hindrances cannot arise when hindrances arise then you know use the success there immediately so abandoning of the reason sensual desire occurs when the meditator learns how to use sixers, recognize it. So you are meditating loving kindness here and you might go away the object of meditation. So you know it, recognize it and then release it, don't pay attention there. You know some people when they practice meditation they close their eyes and they say, wow, I can see beautiful star. Many, many star like the moon, you know, the sky, it looks so nice. I want to see more, see, see, see. Don't do that. Just release it because if you do that, that you are increasing your craving. Just release it. And then relax. What does it mean relax? I practice meditation about 14 years, one four in Thailand and Burma. When I was studying at International Theravada Buddhist Mission University in Myanmar and in Thailand, nobody tell me that relax. Relax, relax. But actually in the Sutta, in the Mahasatipattana Sutta, Sutta number 10, from Middle and Saim, Majjima Nikaya, the Buddha said, Pasambaya. So Pasambaya means uh, tranquilize. So tranquilize means calm. So calm means relaxing. So after coming here, you know, I, I was the only one who questioned a lot to Bhante Vemana Ramsi. I was sitting here, Bhante was sitting here. You know, I always make note what he's talking about. He looked me like this. What are you doing? Uh -huh. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so he knows I, I make note that means I ask him the questions all the time. Then he said, Pasambaya. Okay, Pasambaya, this is the Pali word. And I went to my cabin and take a look at Pasambaya means tranquilize. Tranquilize means relax. Oh, this is in the Sutta already. You know? So, whatever he spoke, whatever he delivered Dhamma talk here, I didn't believe very easily. I'm the person who never believed. And so, when we took the lunch together at the dining hall, he said, you never believe me. <laughs> and I told him, why I have to believe? I came from New York. It's a two hours flight and then two hours drive. I the Dhammasuka Meditation Center. Came here for learning practical way, not for believing you. He said, okay, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> that's fine. I told him, you have to show me from the sutta. 
then I will think that you are speaking the right way. Then he said, okay, sutta number this, go this section, then you'll find. So after finishing meditation, I went to my cabin and take a look at, oh, he's right. Then I accepted his teaching. So exactly, that's why Buddha said, why Bhante Bhimala Ramsi became monk? Do you know that? Nobody know, right? Only one advice of the Buddha. Ehi Pasiku. Come and see. His father was Christian. His mother, Jewish. He said, I am Buddhist monk. And I said, why do you become Buddhist monk? He said, only that one advice of the Buddha, that one, ehi pasiku, come and see my teaching. And after seeing, please try to understand. After understanding, you practice it. After practicing, when you get the truth, you accept it, otherwise you can leave. No problem. Only because of this advice, this wonderful advice, Bhante Vimal Ramsi became Buddhist monk. And he practiced <coughs> meditation more than 46 years. You know? So, so when I came here, then I saw he's really focusing the sutta. So how did I come here? Maybe if I, I should explain this actual practical experience. You know, I was, uh, I was finding uh, good teachers who really have a lot of experience about the meditations. So before going to bed, every night I listen to Dhamma talk from YouTube from the different teachers. So, from Ajahn Brahm, from Bhante Gunaratana, and I mean, who are really meditation teachers, so I listen to the Dhamma talk. And one day I was listening to Bhante Pimala Ramsey talk. He just read the book, opened the book, that's how I heard him, and then he read the Sutta. I was thinking that what he's doing, just read the Sutta. This is not a Dhamma talk. One day, two days, I listen his talk. I went to sleep. This is not Dhamma talk, you know. And then one day, he's giving talk, talk, beautiful comment. Wow, when I, can I wake up? He gives a very beautiful, practical comment, you know. And I wake up, then I was thinking, okay, listen to him. And the way he is speak English, my English is no good, you know, already. <laughs> so the way his, his English, very slow, I can catch very clearly, you know. So, and I was thinking, oh, his English is really good, even though he's American. But his English, the way he speak, I can catch everything. And then I sent an email to David. David, I want to come at Dhamma Supa. I want to stay three months. And he said, I have to talk with the Bhante. Let me, let's see what he's talking about. And then he went to Bhante. Bhante said, okay, tell him to come. And David replied to me, okay, Bhante should come. Here, you are welcome at Dhamma Supa. So, but I cannot confirm whether you can stay three months or not. So I actually want to come for the rainy retreat, three month rainy retreat. So I came here, I practiced here four months one time, and I met Jones. He saw, this is the smiling monk I ever saw. That's why he brought one, my, one of my pictures, you see in the corner? He said, this is the smiling monk, my uncle James. So happy man. So I should take this picture at Dhammas who can put it in the meditation hall. So he brought <laughs> his view, my picture is there. <laughs> so 
Whenever we practice these meditations, we always have to smile. Why? Did the Buddha say for smiling? No, he never said. He cannot find any scripture. I asked Bhante Bhimala Lamsi many times, why are you talking about a smile, a smile, a smile? Buddha never said for a smiling. And he said, did the Buddha say, develop wholesome? Yes, it is Sutta already. Develop a wholesome. Bring up the wholesome thought in your mind. So how do you bring? Smile. So when you smile, you can feel that your mind is clear, pure, and agile. First time I didn't accept what he's talking about. And when I says, read the sutta, oh, Buddha said, bring up the wholesome thought. Develop your wholesome thought. Estate the wholesome thought. Smile. Then I was thinking, let me try. If I smile, what do I feel? So when I started smiling, then I really felt that it's really work. So that's why I accepted his teaching. Right? So, so when you stay with the whole, with, with your object of meditations, with the smiling and then feeling. So this meditation actually the feeling and the smiling. You must feel on it. If you don't feel, if you don't smile, that means you are taking this practice very seriously. You are, you, you are not following the instructions. And how your mind will develop, even you don't know. So that's why um, just we have to think that this meditation is very easy to practice. So loving kindness meditation is the faster progress than other meditation. You can try. Of course, the some meditator have the, the different experience. They practice inside meditation. We also did. And some of, someone practice the anapanasati, breath in, breath out. You know. So which one is the best for you? One of my students came at the Brahma Vihara Meditation Center every Friday come. I taught him Brahma Vihara, the loving kindness meditation. And when he go back at home, he practice yoga. And I told him, you know, I Jesus only one. If you practice here loving kindness, go back at home, practice the yoga, I don't know whether it will work or not. Just choose only one and develop it you know so i cannot tell him stop yoga practice so if i say it like that then he will be angry so his hatred will will develop you know so I, i'm not going to say that so this first hindrance is you already know through the six senses eye ear nose tongue body and mind the sense, sensual desire arise. When the sensual desire arise, is the six years there. Second hindrance is Biapada, hatred, aversion, ill will. Here the Blessed One said, they are being hatred, aversion, ill will. A person, they understand, there is hatred in me, or there be no hatred in me. They understand there is no hatred in me. So when hatred rises, then you know, use the sixes that moment. And then when you meditate, meditate, hatred is not rising, you know. So this is the mindfulness. That moment your mind is very clear. And they also understand how there becomes to be the rising of unrising hatred and how there comes to be the abandoning of unabandoning of erasing hatred and how there comes to be the future non-rising of abandoned hatred. So for abandoned hatred, just use the six years, then hatred go away. So not rise. 
that moment. By seeing these and listening them, you start disassociate from them and they just become parts of the machine that they are deciding like a car. Okay, these are the second hindrances. So when you meditate, you may, you know, in the past, uh, you was angry with someone. You were you meditating, meditating. So maybe you and you was angry with your friend. That thought will arise in your mind. Just use the six years; it will go away. And maybe. In the past, he was uh, quarreling with your wife or husband or with your family members, so or with your friends. So that thought may arise. Just use the harmonious practice. The six hours there to go away. And then second, the number three hindrances: sleepiness and dullness. That means thinamitta in Pali. Thina means sleepiness or sloth, and midda means dullness. So I use the actually sleepiness dullness because uh, when you meditate, you really feel very sleepy, you know, very sleepy. So when you take a lot of food, and after that you never take nap, you come at the meditation hall, and then you. Definitely, you'll get a sleepiness. You know, you know, it feels so very sleepy. You know, so I should go to the, my bed and sleep. I should not practice to, today. <laughs> go to my cabin and then sleep one hour, then come back. You know, so that such uh, thinking will arise in your mind. So that's why that's, this is the one. One, one of the hindrances. Thina midda in Pali. Sleepiness and dullness. So when you know sleepiness and dullness arise in your mind, is the right effort, that six hours there. So the Buddha said here, the Blessed One, there being sleepiness and dullness, or slot and torpor, a person, they understand there is sleepiness and dullness in me. Or there being no sleepiness and dullness in a person, they understand there is no sleepiness and dullness in me. They also understand how there comes to be rising of unreasoned sleepiness and dullness and how there comes to be the abandoning of reason, sleepiness and dullness, and how there comes to be the future non-arising of abandoned sleepiness and dullness. This is in the scriptures already explained. So when you know sleepiness rising, you know it, you understand it, just use the six hours there, then and you meditating, meditating, then you see no hindrances, no sleepiness arising. So you know it. Your mind will tell you that, okay, hindrances, sleepiness is not arising in your mind. So I am now okay. Right? And then when non-arising sleepiness and dullness arise, you know, you understand it. So that's why every moment, every moment, you have to understand, understand, understand. So teacher, different teacher explain actually different explanation. So according to the for foundation of mindfulness, Satipatthana or Maha Satipatthana. The Buddha said, I am walking, I understand. I am eating, I understand. I am sitting, I understand. And I am taking shower, I understand. Okay, I am walking, I understand. So every moment, but Buddha never said in the sutta, walking, 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 sleeping, 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 eating, eating, eating. Never said that. You cannot find the four foundation of mindfulness. Sutta. Do you know what happened when I was in Thailand? 
आते हैं आज एक बार प्रैक्टिस सबसे मेडिटेशन इन इन भार्म है यू नो सो व्हेन आई केम टू थाईलैंड एंड वी वेंट फॉर द रिट्रीट द फॉरेस्ट वन फॉरेस्ट मॉनेस्ट्री देन वन टीचर ही वाज टीचिंग द मेडिटेशन टू आस बिकॉज़ वी हैव टू डू ऑफ कोर्स व्हाट अबाउट दे टीच वी हैव टू � and he said okay lifting 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 pushing 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 dropping 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 touching 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 this is like i don't know what kinds of technique this one <laughs> but in the sutta the buddha never said that and also you have to make sound they was thinking this is not a meditation this is like singing song <laughs> right <laughs> But in Burma, very quiet, you know, just according to the, the instructions. But a venerable uh, Mahasi Siado, you already know most of you, Mahasi Siado, he focused the Mahasatipatthana Sutta. Mahasatipatthana Sutta said, I am sitting, I understand. I am walking. I understand. This is the in the Sari Patan Sutta. But Venerable Mahasi Siado said he create easy technique for teaching the public, for teaching meditation to the people. He said, okay, when you the abdomen, because this is his creation, he created his technique that one. When you breathe in. Then it's a rising. When you breath out, it's falling. When you breath in, rising. You see here the abdomen. Then he cre his creation is rising, falling the abdomen. Rising, falling. You just be mindful there. Rising, falling. Rising, falling. Rising, falling. It also work for the some people, you know. So. That's why this technique become very famous in Thai in Burma. So people who who went there from the different countries, so they practice that technique, and then when they return back from uh, from that country, and they start teaching that one. But actually, in the Sutta, Buddha said, when you are eating, you understand. When you are walking, you understand. Buddha said that way. So we are here teaching the sutta. So we have to follow exactly what the Buddha really said, right? So, so this is the number three hindrances: udda sakukus, sleepiness and dullness. When you know, okay, you sit one hour, uh, thirty minutes. Sleepiness and dullness is arising a lot in your mind. Just break up your meditation, go out, practice walking meditation. Okay, don't go uh, to your cabin and sleep. Don't do that. <laughs> okay, just break up your meditation. Go because we have we have a big place here for practicing walking meditations. Just do that. And after practicing twenty minutes or thirty minutes. Uh, walking meditations, <coughs> come back again, and practice. Do the sitting meditation. Okay. And then number four hindrances. Uddasa kukucha. So uddasa means restlessness. Can you mind go here and there, here and there, here and there, everywhere. And anxiety. I want to keep my mind one place. But my mind never listen to me. I want hindrances not to rise, but your mind never listen to you. There is no control. So if you think that you want to control, yeah, come here for ten days retreat. I want to attain the jhanas, all the kinds of jhanas: first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, fourth jhana, and I want to become arahant within ten days. You know, so you just when pushing, pushing, pushing. The more hindrances will arise if you do that. 
you know so that's why I said open your, your mind you know Bhante Vimala Lamsi whenever he goes somewhere for giving talk he said when you go to the YouTube you'll say my little friend my little brother that one is me he's talking about me do you know why I when I was practicing here I pushing 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 a lot because he, I was thinking that I want to attain the Rahan within four months and he understood about my mind you know and he said I know you want to attain a Rahan within four months you know I said, no 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 I'm, no no don't don't say that <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so and then first time he told me, don't push. I told you, allow the hindrances. And then it's the six hours there. And don't practice, don't push a lot. You know, every morning I go to him, same instructions he's giving, same instructions. He said, I already told you. And my mind was so wandering, restless, restless. And he said, okay, wake up. Three o'clock at night. Wow, three o'clock. I never wake up at night. How can I practice meditation three o'clock? And in the forest, everybody is sleeping and I will meditate. He said, okay, try. Okay, first time I woke up and after uh, washing my face and I went to my cabin and started practicing from three to seven o'clock one sitting without moving you know first day oh, i was so sleepy oh no 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 this is not the good good time for me and i went to bed i want to sleep you know and then he asked me how about your meditation no good what happened i woke up at three o'clock you know and Try to practice meditation, but got so sleepy. So okay, try it tonight. Okay. And second day, I started practicing. Then it's really, really work, you know. And then one sitting without moving, four hours. One sitting, from three to seven o'clock. Seven o'clock, tang, 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 ring the bell, and I went, came here for taking breakfast. So after finishing breakfast, and I went to my cabin and slept one hour, two hours. And I, after that, then I came here and practiced meditation, 11 o'clock lunch. And I, I went again my cabin for taking a nap around one, one hour. Then exactly 1.30, I came here and practiced 1 to 5.30 four hours, one sitting. So then he said, my little friend, finally he listened to me. <laughs> so when you see on YouTube, my little friend, that means that one is me, you know? So should not push too much. If you just allow the hindrances, you know, and then when any hindrances arise, just use the harmonious practice that we will see all the hindrances will be weaker, 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 weaker. And eventually when you attain the Rahanship, Nibbana, then hindrances stop. Hindrances will not arise anymore. Then you are free. I am now free from suffering. Free from greed, free from hatred, free from delusion. So what does it mean delusion? Greed, you understand. Hatred, you understand. And delusion, what does it mean delusion? The Four Noble Truths. One who doesn't understand the Four Noble Truths, the Buddha said, delusion. Okay? Suffering, cause of suffering, cessation of suffering. Then the path that leads to the cessation of suffering. This is four truths. If you understand the four truths, that means you are free from suffering and eventually attain Nibbana. 
So ni plus vana. Ni means no. And vana means fire. So the blessed one said, Great is the one of the fire. Hatred is one of the fire. And delusion is one of the fire. So when you know fire in your mind, that means you have the peace. Your mind is very peaceful. Very, you are different than other, other people. You know, so that way you will get a happiness, nibbanic happiness, so that you never experience in your life. Okay? So that is called the nibbana. So, so restlessness and anxiety, of course, it will arise, just allow, and then use the six hours there. Okay? So here is a they are being restlessness and anxiety in a person. They understand there is restlessness and anxiety in me. Or there be no restlessness and anxiety in a person. They understand there is no restlessness and anxiety in me. And they also understand how there comes it to be the rising of unreason, restlessness and anxiety, and how there comes to be the abandoning of reason, restlessness and anxiety, and how there comes to be the future non-arising of abandoned restless anxiety. So these are the instructions from the Sutta, right? But I already explained here easily, right? So anxiety, restlessness, anxiety, when arise, allow them and use the six years, then it will be weaker, weaker. And the last one, the last hindrances, is a doubt, as I mentioned earlier. So doubt about the meditation technique, doubt about teacher, doubt about, you know, scriptures. So when such a doubt rise in your mind, just use the six hours there. Harmonious practice. So, if you do that, then you will see, you will have the confidence. You know, what you are doing. The joy will rise in your mind. You know, thinking thought, examining thought, joy, happiness, any unification of mind will arise in your mind. Then you you are in the first jhana. This talk will be after tomorrow. What I am saying today. <laughs> okay? So you will be in the first jhana. If no hindrances arise in your mind, even for five minutes or even for five seconds. Five seconds you are in the first jhana. Okay? So people say, you know, if you want to attain jhana, first jhana, you have to practice 10 years to attain the first jhana. This is not true. And the sutta never said like that. Sutta said that if you understand the five hindrances and then harmonious practice right for six hours, these two things, you know, when the meditators come to my center, you know, at the Brahma Vihara Meditation Center, at the beginning, I, see, I teach two things first. One is five hindrances. You must know five hindrances. And the other one is the six hours. Harmonious practice. Do you know why? I told them, memorize it. What are the five hindrances? Sensual desire, hatred, and then sleepiness and dullness, restlessness and anxiety, and doubt. So you got the five hindrances, right? And then, you know, recognize it, release it, relax, tension and tightness, and then bring up the wholesome thought by smiling, and then keep the wholesome thought as long as you can, and then just repeat it. So, this is not like uh, 
you just when this one arise and you use this one when this one arise you use that one so when you do that again and again and eventually you'll see it automatically occur in your mind so that way you'll see the hindrances is not rising even for five seconds even for one minute two minutes three minutes four minutes you know ten minutes so that moment you were in the jhana already buddha said in the sutta this is not my just only you, sh you should not believe what i'm saying you know because this is on already in the sutta buddha explained right so why i have to wait 10 years for attaining jhana this is not the truth this is the people explanation sutta never say like that you know so you know first hindrances at the beginning at night so when you finish the meditation here go to your cabin and then what are the five hindrances just keep in your mind memorize it keep in your mind one side and then other side six hours so we have two if you know these two things this meditation is very easy for you very easy how sensual desire arise six hours there and then aversion arise six hours there sleepiness dullness arise six hours there and restless, restlessness and anxiety arise six hours there doubt arise six hours there then you'll see the hindrances getting weak weaker 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 and you are in the jhana so that's why these two things i teach at the beginning for the meditators if you don't know how to what are the five hindrances and what are the six hours that means this meditation you cannot practice well so tonight what do you have to do memorize these two things at at at, the, at your cabin okay so i have two friend already one is the five hindrances another one is the six hours then you come here definitely your meditation will be very well from tomorrow don't believe me just you practice okay <laughs> i'm not saying for believing me you know i don't i don't like this word the belief there is no belief in buddhism no belief so buddhism means the way of life the practical truth that's why i argue a lot with bhante vimala ramsey when i came here i'm not going to believe you what you are saying he said okay that's fine you have to show me that from the sutta and i have to see myself i have to read and after listening dhamma talk you know i went to my cabin and next day we went for breakfast lunch and okay did you see the sutta what i said to you yes one day okay do you now trust me yes <laughs> i really trust you <laughs> so then he was laughing you know this is the way how friendly i accepted the teaching from him that's why i always say my guru my guru my guru whenever i give the meditation any places in new york and other places my teacher said like this you know one advice i never forget what my teacher said he said when i went to him for interview keep precept and take care of the dhamma everything will come you no need to worry anything this advice so wonderful and i was thinking that okay let me let me try what he said is it, it work or not you know he said i am the american monk you know and how did i establish meditation here i always keep the precept and take care of dhamma everything is coming slowly meditators are coming from around the world and they are donating this donating that you know they are offering this offering that so the first time they bought only the the monastic area that land only 30000 us dollars 
only that land so there is one if you go there you'll see there's a small house the long a small house he was sleeping there and one two meditator comes they also slept there and he meditate that place he taught them meditation and people are coming coming slowly and someone said bante i want to i want to buy this one this area and i want to donate and another people said okay i want to donate this donate that and now this area 103 acres this meditation center huge meditation center right i proud too much when i go go to the new york and I, in bangladesh wherever i i always say about this center you know i'm really really very grateful to the david i say my brother david you know i'm going to establish a meditation center <coughs> in bangladesh same twin center I already did one in uh, in New York with the support sup, uh, the supporting uh, f- collecting the fund from my people Bangladeshi community and also some American people so that one already is okay and I am going to establish another center big center actually 3 to 400 people can sit can meditate You know, I save twelve years all the money, about sixty thousand U.S. dollars. And last time I went there, all gone. And very big meditation hall we we built there. And after coming back, I said, "David, you know, everything is for the meditation center, gone." And he said, "Bante, don't worry. The rest of things yeah, will help you." go fund me <laughs> go fund me and he collected seven thousands you know and then we make already two uh, rooms for the monks and novices almost done already and then um before you study actually our great teacher you know dalson he donated 3130 dollars yeah. just a, before he study you know i just show him my project so how do you come in keep the precept and then take care of the dhamma so that's why i never forget bhante bimalaram sir advice is free to work i don't have any he said i don't have anything i have the big center you say how come it because keep the precept and then take care of the dhamma means practice the dhamma not all just to take in your head and carry okay this is the buddha this buddha dhamma sangha this is the buddha dhamma sangha no not like that practice it the buddha said in the in the scripture o monks please keep the precept and practice the dhamma try to understand the te- uh, my truth try to understand the teaching of the buddha if you cannot get the taste of the dhamma you are not the real disciple of me so if you want to see the buddha you have to practice the dhamma you know so how wonderful advice you know So last times actually last year I went to Bangladesh for constructing the new center so one of my student also went there from New York he's really a good practitioner he doesn't like rites and rituals you know there are many meditators they really want to practice meditation what the buddha and his disciple did in the past when you read the history of the buddha's teaching most of the monks listen to dhamma talk and practice meditation and they attain istri mantra once returner non returner and arahant you know they never practiced the rituals but nowadays 
lot of monks and we are doing who I do you know that one of the good things we have everybody, know, everybody will not practice meditation so we have to bring all those people for the temple at the temple so what do we have to do okay chanting bhavatu sabba mangalang rakkantu sabba devata sabba buddha anubhavena sada sutti bhavantuti we blessed to david this morning he study right this and then yesterday also and then different kinds of the sutta chanting because we have to bring the those people at the temple the sand monastery and they also when they have the diff, and diff, the problem at the house so then by the monks we go there and we do chanting metta sutta <clears throat> metta sutta actually this completely meditation sutta if you read that loving kindness the discourse of loving kindness you know from kuddaka nikaya so if you read that sutta buddha said okay when you are walking radiate loving kindness to others when you are inside outside may all living beings be happy and peaceful may all living beings be free from suffering free from danger free from difficulty who are born who will, didn't born who will, who was born who wasn't born who will be born in the in the future for all living beings be happy peaceful free from suffering you see this is completely merit loving kindness meditation but when people invite us at a home we go karaniya metta kusalena yantang santang padang abhisamisya sakho vozo saso i think you don't understand this is the pali so we chant this sutta for the people and people left and right and join together be respectful delicious in our talk you know and of course this sutta also very powerful when you recite at home you know many people they when they sleep at home they they see the bad dream you know a lot of difficulties you know the actually this is the one sort of belief also and something is moving here and there here and there you know and people in bed amongst who go there when do do recitation the sutta then from that time they can sleep well very well i can give you the one practical example that happened in california san francisco one catholic family they are vietnamese catholic family actually her husband got one disease that one is the the blood blood come come from his eye you know so his wife took her to the the hospital and after four months he passed away the same disease has happened to his first son and she was thinking that this is not the this is not the disease actually someone tried to destroy my family you know so then she took her son to the church okay father father please help my son you know four months ago my husband passed away because of the same disease and the same disease happened to my son please try to help then father said sorry we cannot help you you take her take him to the hospital and she was very upset so she met one barmis uh, barmis guy he said okay well could you go to the any monastery because because the he barmis people already they believe that you know when the monk do chant sort of chanting then her son would be well you know so they went to the one monastery in california so she can speak english but a barmis monk cannot speak english so what she saying she doesn't understand 
What Bhante says, she, uh, what she said, Bhante didn't understand. What Bhante says, she didn't, she didn't understand. This is the big problem, you know. And the one guy, the attendance, the kapiya, attendance of the Bhante, uh, he could, he, he understood a little bit English. He said, okay, well, from here, two hours drive, from here, two hours drive from San Francisco, there is one meditation center, Tongpulu Meditation Center. It's in the forest. So go there, there are four monks, but what I know, one monk can speak English. Okay, go there. And then she took her sons and went there. And they entered the Buddha hall and her son uh, lying down in front of the Buddha. You know, then the monks came, what happened? Why, why did you bring your son and they lying down in, the, in front of the Buddha? What happened? He said, Venerable Sir, Venerable Sir, please protect my son. The four months ago, my husband passed away. The same disease, rise, same disease uh, happened to my son. Please help us, help us. The four monks they sat together and with a string and they did long time, one hour chanting. They did one hour chanting. And then, you know, with the one part uh, water, they moved the string and that water they spread the, in his eyes and then some water that drank. So you see, Bhante said, okay, you should go back tonight and tomorrow you should call, uh, call me. And next day, the blood stopped fall, falling down from, from his eyes. Stopped. And she has confidence about this uh, the powerful sutta, you know. This sutta is really, really work. And then eventually uh, that uh, her, her son got become better, you know. So, but she cannot sleep at home. She doesn't know. She didn't know that what, what is going on at home when she go to the bed and some sort of sound is coming you know something is falling down but actually she, she was thinking that mouse is running you know but actually not and she went to the monastery and she said venerable sir i don't know what happened in my home and she explained everything and venerable said okay you should invite the monks we should go to the temp uh, your home and we will do the chanting. And the monks went there and recited Metta Sutta, loving kindness, the discourse of the loving kindness, the Sutta. And from that time, they could sleep well. So that's why this Sutta is also very powerful, you know. So, but what we have to do, we should not believe all those things right now, we should meditate. <laughs> right? So, so do we we do different kinds of things actually one way to bring the people at the monastery and teach them to do the to do the good things buddha said two things here dana giving generosity sila give the precept and bhavana practice meditation so he said first dana giving generosity why why we have to give generosity first? Because we have to destroy, we have to overcome the craving from our mind. Because our mind is so strong, you know, like rock. So we have to, more you give and more your craving will be reduced, reduced, reduced. And then second one is the sila. <laughs> Keep precept. So I said to all of you, please don't break up any precept. If you break up, then if you feel guilty yourself, so you are you are destroying yourself. You know, if you think that okay, I broke up one precept, so then you come to me, and then okay, Bante, I 
broke up one preset I want to take the 10 preset again so then you feel free your mind is purified then you can, your meditation will develop very well you know so keep the precept to purify your mind and then meditation then your meditation will progress very faster you'll see so how wonderful technique that, that the Buddha said first giving generosity dana second keep the precept to purify mind and third bhavana to develop meditation so whenever you open the buddhist uh, buddhist book any buddhist book so you'll find that number one dana giving generosity number two keep the precept and number number three bhavana meditation so which one is the the highest one meditation meditation so if you practice meditation you know you will gain a lot of merit that one is the highest so the, this when the uh, the first day i said about my mom you know because she was practitioner she always she woke up uh, at the 3 a.m and I practice meditation at home but you know she went different teachers whatever those monks know they just taught them you know but still she closed her eyes and she meditated so I told her okay go to meditation center and donate the rice so when all the meditator will eat that rice you will gain a lot of merit this is a good merit and she was very happy, you know. And she always said, my beloved son, Bhante. You know, he always encouraged me for doing the wholesome activities. Dana. And then when the end of the retreat, and they invited the Sangha, the more than four, and they did the Sangha Dana. Sangha Dana means offering to the community of monks, you know. So that was also Sangha means four to more, four to up. So when you when you mention the word of the Sangha, that means including all the Buddhas there, Gotama Buddha and the other Buddhas. Pachaka Buddhas, everyone in, included. Because the Buddha was the one, one of the Sangha, right? So, so when you say, this offering I am giving to the Sangha, so that way you will gain a lot of merit. Okay, this one I am offering to the Dhammananda, maybe little merit. Not too much. <laughs> so if you say, okay, this all donation give it to us all Sangha, then you will gain really a lot of merit. So remember that. So okay, so the, the, so doubt, you already know, no doubt arise. If any doubt arise, just use the already give it the key to open the lock, right? You have the five hindrances and six are there. So, these five hindrances arise, use the six hours there, then you will feel you, your meditation is really developing, developing, developing very well. You are one of the jhanas and after tomorrow I will explain all how will you attain the first jhana, how will you attain the second jhana, how will you attain the third jhana, how will you understand, how will you know. Don't wait for the Delson. Okay, Delson will tell me what jhana I already attained. No, don't wait for that. Why you have to wait? It's already in the sutta. Buddha already mentioned. If you attain this, 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 you are in the first jhana. Very clear. Don't wait. You know? So, in the sutta already very clearly mentioned. So, this is then eventually the Buddha said here in the four foundation of mindfulness because this one I quote from the Sutta number 10 
In this way, one avoids observing mind objects as mind objects internally. One avoids observing mind objects as mind objects externally. One avoids observing mind objects as mind objects both internally and externally. One avoids observing in mind objects their nature of rising. One avoids observing in mind objects their nature of vanishing. One avoids observing in mind objects their nature of both arising and vanishing and they avoid independent, not craving and clanging. So first one is craving, then clanging. What is the meaning of the craving? So craving means I like it, I don't like it mine. When sensual desire arise, I like it, I want to get more, you develop. This is craving. And then hated rise, I don't like it. Because I didn't want the hated rise in my mind. Because I am practicing meditation at the Masuka right now. So I don't want hated. Don't come. Don't rise now. I don't like it. Hated to rise. This is a craving. You know? And clinging, very strong. It is more strong than craving, you know? Very strong. So if no craving arise, no clinging arise. So Delson is going to explain the different originations. So at that time it will be very clear. If craving arise, clanging arise. If no craving arise, clanging also not arise. Then eventually you let in Nibbana. What is Nibbana? At the Masuka? <laughs> Where is Nibbana? Nibbana is from, from your head to the feet. Here. In, we have to find out. We have to find out what is Nibbana. Not any place. Not a Dhamma Sukha. Not in the uh, Brahma world. Not in the heaven. Nor in, in other countries. Nibbana is from your head to the feet. So you just have to find out. How? You know, great rise, just abandon it by using the six hours. And then hate to rise, abandon it by using the six hours. And then you have knowledge about the four noble truths, you understand very clearly. Then you attain Nibbana. Nibbana is here, it's not so far. You know, there is no realm of Nibbana, you know, so that's why we have to see and then understand and practice it. When you get the truth, then accept it. This is Ehi Pasiko Dhamma. Come and see this beautiful teaching. During the Buddha's time, you know, when he attained enlightenment, he was thinking, my Dhamma is very deep. I don't think so that people will understand in the world. People are not ready to understand because my Dhamma, Dhamma means the truth. What I gain, I don't think so the people will understand here because their mind is very in the dark, you know. Then the king of the Devaloka, the king of the deities, <coughs> he used his psychic power and then his, his chair, you know, shaking like this. And he was thinking, what happened? Somebody will take up my chair and he used his psychic power and he saw in the human world the enlightenment one arose and he was thinking that what he attained 
he is not going to teach. Because people are not ready, they will not understand. And he came down the human world and he bows three times to the Buddha and he said, Venerable Sir, what you gain, beautiful Dhamma, please, for the happiness of the many, for the benefit of the many, please preach to others. When he said like that, the Buddha accepted his invitation. That's why, you know, when you're, when you're a monk, when you're a nun, if somebody don't invite, don't go their home. Okay? <laughs> you have to accept the invitation. This is the rules. You see, today, Dhammananda went to my, uh, he offered the food. Bhante, please accept the food. Then I say, sadhu, sadhu. Right? So without accepting the food, we cannot tell it. We make offerings. So people have to offer. So yesterday, today, when we went for arms round, David, Delsons, and the Christians, they offer the food. Then we say, Bhavatu, Sabha, Mangala, what is the meaning of that? Yeah, I, so we have to practice today, to, tonight, right? Because with the understanding, we should not practice anything. Buddhism is you understand and you practice. This is Buddhism. You don't understand and you practice. This is wrong, wrong belief, wrong practice, right? So I was thinking, <laughs> so what I'm saying, Baba to Sabha Mangalang, you repeat after me and then you don't understand anything. And <laughs> so I was thinking, okay, I should figure it out. And I went to the online and I saw the some sutta and I found from there and I quote. Then I, 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 brought, I said, sent to the David and said, told him, okay, please print out. You have to explain them how to pronounce Pali and what is the meaning of the, that Pali, okay? So what we have to do, the blessing, we have to bless, that means we have to give them thanks because they offer the food to us, you know? And whatever we are taking the food, before taking the food, we have to do another things. That one also we are going to practice tonight here, you know. So, uh, do you have any question about the five hindrances? No? It's clear. Wow. Yes. Okay. So, as I said, the when Kama Sandha, the sensual desire rise, recognize it, release it. Okay. I put a numbering. Okay. You see. Sensual desire arise, okay? Recognize it, release it, relax tension and tightness, and then re smile, and then what? Rita, <laughs> <laughs> repeat. <laughs> I usually, most of the years, I use harmonious practice in this sometimes. Okay, that's it. And then, second, second one, okay, hatred arise. Just use the sixers there, okay? Recognize it, release it, and relax, tension and tightness, bring the whole sum thought by smiling, keep the whole sum thought as long as you can repeat it. And then sleepiness and dullness arise, again, recognize it, release it, relax, tension and tightness, and bring the whole sum thought by smiling, keep the whole sum thought as long as you can, repeat it. And then next one, Restlessness and anxiety arise. Recognize it, release it, relax, tension and tightness and bring up the whole sound thought as long as you can repeat it. And the last one, doubt rise. Recognize it, release it, relax, tension and tightness and bring up the whole sound of a smiling, keep the whole sound thought as long as you can repeat it. Got it? Clear? Just to you know, you understand. You understand. You understand is the most important here. You understand or know it, then this is the unwholesome thought because you meditate, you are practicing loving kindness here, and your object is going from here to there. 
so you understand it then don't pay attention continuously there because this is unwholesome so you have to use that and don't pay attention there and tension you'll see you had be very strong like this you, if you practice very seriously you know and tension and tightness full of tension and tightness you will get definitely within 30 minutes a very big headache so just relax it relax in your head in your whole body and mind then you feel light clear pure and agile you'll experience yourself that's why i said this is the feeling meditation and smiling meditation you feel yourself the how this your mind is developing the next yeah thank you yeah no more question wow it's become very clear to everyone really okay so now um we are going to practice the how when our supporter david and dalson christians jury they all for the food <laughs> so we have to give the, we have to thanks them because they are going to offer the food to us they are also gaining a lot of merit so we thanks means here blessing so blessing so buddhist term is said a blessing so you have to bless them because they offer the food to us so what are they so here you see uh, this pali term is a very beautiful word you know so we will practice in pali how to pronounce it so you are very lucky that you know you are pronouncing the pali <coughs> correctly you know i am the student of bhante bikubodi so i learned the pali from him and is still learning you know so i always try to pronounce the pali correctly you know so if you pronounce little bit wrong this is not good mm-hmm. you know so that's why i have to pronounce exactly how, how to pronounce it okay go ahead ah uh, bande uh, when we were doing the ordination you said remember you said uh, first we did buddham mm-hmm. and then we did buddham and you said there was a difference in that and that, that so uh, according to traditions when you Uh, get the uh, ordi- during the ordinations mm-hmm. you have to pronounce am mm. but when you put am dot the top of the am dot yeah, yeah, that yeah, means yeah. ang but in the paper you see no dot mm. because you have to pronounce am during the ordination only but later on you can say ang buddang dhammang sangang it's like that but when you get the ordination ceremony when you the during the ordination you must pronounce buddha and why, why and why is that it's actually traditionally came i exactly don't know oh. you know you really don't know actually why the buddha said like that this is the really buddha said or maybe some, the monks created i exactly don't know mm-hmm. and no answer for that <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah okay yeah and the line under the r is It's called long a long a. Ah. Ah. Yeah, it's a long tone and it's no a long that means it's short tone. It's when you say a long it's a long tone. Okay? So now uh, let us the okay go ahead. So <clears throat> I'm reading the the English and now it makes sense to me. Exactly that's why I I I I I did a homework for that. Yeah. So <laughs> I've heard this chant for maybe 40 or 50 years and I've never heard what it means. Oh really? But I think the English words when I hear them are really powerful. Of course. I know what they mean. Exactly. But the Pali words I have no idea what they mean. Yeah, so you have idea. <laughs> so you'll have idea of this retreat. <laughs> you'll be in the lighten about it, you know. Okay. Don't worry. So we did post this in English and Pali on the wall in front of you. So. You, you know that David he requested me, Bante, I want the 
meditators because they all, everyone will be monastery. So I, I, I requesting you, please try to teach them some Pali, how to pronounce it. So before coming here, he sent an email to me and he also requested. That's why I was thinking that, you know, this is a good chance for all of you to learn the Pali. At least you can say, after going at Dhammasukha Meditation Center, we learn something. <laughs> right? We learn something. Right? Meditation, practical truth, and as well as Pali knowledge. Right? Even though I am not the good scholar, but I know whatever I know, I try to share to all of you. Okay? So here, please repeat after me. First, we will practice the blessing, bhavatu, and then second one is the reflection for the food. So the for food, we will collect the food. We will we'll go for the arms round, and after taking the food, we will come. Uh, everyone have take the seat, your own seat. Then everyone have this paper, okay? So this one we'll practice here from tomorrow every morning. We'll practice here and on the table you will see this paper again. So by by seeing the paper we'll recite together. We'll bless them because they were very hard. We are happy mom. No need to worry. We just practice meditation, right? This is their duty. They offer that offer the food to us. We just eat and meditate, right? But anyway, we are gaining a lot of merit and that all merit we share for the David and for Christian, for Dalson, right? So that way, <coughs> they say sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. What does it mean sadhu, sadhu? Well done, well done, well done. We say in English. That means we gain a lot of merit the whole day. And you offer one spoon of rice and all my merit sharing to all of you. Do you accept it? Yes. Yeah. He says sadhu already. <laughs> Do you know what happened in New York City? I often go to different places, uh, people house, people invite me and I can do chanting and other things also. Then one, the monk, you know, who went with me uh, in Bangladesh, <coughs> before going to Bangladesh, he was thinking that I am the meditation teacher, I only teach meditation, but I am not the skill of, of chanting. He didn't see that. And when I went to Bangladesh, because people invite me, offer the food, do the some sort of blessing, do chanting, you know, he, he closed his eyes and then, because he doesn't know how to chant it, you know. He said, you are the chanting monk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, told, I explained him, you know why? People who, who are not interested about meditation, we have to chant for them. We have to bless them. We have to do something good for them because they already offer the food to us, right? So if we think that, okay, okay, I'm not going to do chanting. I'm only focused on meditation. So in New York City, when I went to the people's house, so end of the ceremony, we share the merit by pouring the water, you know? Then one lady told me, Bhante, we gain a lot of merit today because the, for doing that, for gaining that, the merit, we did a lot of things. We went to the uh, shopping uh, for the supermarket to buy something, you know, for making the delicious food for the monks. And we went different places. So we worked very hard for, uh, for gaining the merit. Why we have to share to others? <laughs> she said to me, why we have to share to others? Because this is my merit. Why I, I have to share to others? And you always say, okay, please share merit to the departed one. Share merit to the departed one. I'm not going to do that. Because I work very hard for that. <laughs> then I said, no, don't. this is not the way what the Buddha said. 
So more you offer, more you share the merit to departed one, your merit will be increased. For, and I told her, okay, for instance, one teacher when teach at the college, the university. So more he teach, so do you think his, uh, his knowledge is going to reduce? No, it's going to increase, right? Exactly the same. So whatever we gain the knowledge, whatever we do the meritorious deeds, punya kriya in Pali, we share to the departed one. So if you reborn in the ghost realm, you accept our merit. By this merit, you may reborn in human being or maybe in the heaven. This is the Samsutta explain, okay? So we are not going that side. We are meditator. We are practicing meditations. Understand and meditate. Understand and meditate. That's all, right? This is our way, right? So now we are going to, first one, blessing. Blessing, because every day we are going for arms round. We have to know that. So as Dhammananda said, Pali, I know the translation, but I don't know the Pali, what, how to pronounce it and how to recite it. So today I want everyone to recite very nicely, more beautiful than me, right? <laughs> okay, together, Bhavatu Sabba Mangalang. First, first I recite and then you repeat after me. Okay, that will, will be clear. Bhavatu Sabba Mangalang. Bhavatu Sabba Mangalang. Rakantu Sabba Devata. Rakantu Sabba Devata. Sabba Buddha Nubhavena. Sada Sukhi Bhavantu Te Sada Sukhi Bhavantu Te Bhavatu Sabba Mangalang Bhavatu Sabba Mangalang Rakantu Sabba Devata Sabba Dhamma Nubhavena Sabba Dhamma Nubhavena Sada Sukhi Bhavantu Te Sada Sukhi Bhavantu Te Bhavatu Sabba Mangalang Rakantu Sabba Devata Rakantu Sabba Devata Sabba Sangha Nubhavena Sabba Sangha Nubhavena Sada Sukhi Bhavantu Te Sada Sukhi Bhavantu Te Okay, one more time again. So the translation, you already know that, so you can read yourself, right? So when we bless them, we do Pali, in Pali. But translation, you already know that. So no need to, no need to uh, read the translation that moment, that time, just only Pali. Now this one you can, you can keep here. Uh, every morning we will we'll recite together. Again, Bhavatu Sabba Mang. And now we can do together? Can you do that? Yeah, good. Okay, good. Bhavatu Sabba Mangalang Rakantu Sabba Devata Sabba Buddha Nubhavena Sada Sukhi Bhavantu Te Bhavatu Sabba Mangalang Rakantu Sabba Devata Sabba Dhamma Nubhavena Sada Sukhi Bhavantu Te Bhavatu Sabba Mangalang 
rakantu sabba devata sabba sangha nubhavena sada sukhi bhavantu te okay one more time bhavatu sabba mangala rakantu sabba devata sabba buddha nubhavena sada sukhi bhavantu te bhavatu sabba mangala rakantu sabba devata sabba dhamma nubhavena sada sukhi bhavantu te bhavatu sabba mangala rakantu sabba devata sabba sangha nubhavena sada sukhi bhavantu te sadhu 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 okay this is the last time final okay and then tomorrow we will practice in the morning every morning we will practice it. so after this and then we will go next bhavatu sabba mangalam rakantu sabba devata sabba buddha nubhavena sada sukhi bhavantu the bhavatu sabba mangalam rakantu sabba devata sabba dhamma nubhavena sada sukhi bhavantu te bhavatu sabba mangalam rakantu sabba devata sabba sangha nubhavena sada sukhi bhavantu te sadu 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 very good so everybody did excellent actually so now we are going to do the reflection for the food this one we practice after practicing that then we will end our talk okay is it possible uh, you stand at the end right you know the most senior right at the when we receive our uh alms we do our round round Is it possible at this point for you to come down a bit halfway? You're kind of like our choir director and but, but we can't the, the other half of the line cannot hear you very well. Oh, yeah. So so I have to be in the middle, right? Yeah. <laughs> in the middle. And it doesn't get lost. Okay, no problem. So I should be in the middle. Yeah, that okay. <laughs> no problem. Then we can all hear you. Okay, good. This is a good idea actually. No, no. I can hear anything. I'm all the way on the other side. <laughs> Okay, no problem. Okay. It gets worse. The volume gets worse. Okay, no problem. So from tomorrow, I'll be in the middle. Great. Okay. Great. You could lead the line, but to come to the middle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Lead That's the line. That's all they really want is to hear you when yeah. you're chanting. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lead, yeah. but then come to the middle of the chant. Yeah. Okay. The first I go for the first uh, the uh, first. Uh, first yeah, line and then this. when after uh, collecting the food i should come to the middle right uh, yeah, good yeah, yeah. okay this is the also good things no problem okay now yeah uh, when i uh, will take okay go ahead bonpe i am poly are the v's always pronounced as w's v they're as v yeah v oh, never as w's not the b b is a v is a w wa wow. wa yeah that's yeah that's a, that's a Yeah, this is okay. the way how to pronounce it. Always wa. You always wa. Never ba. Nah. Okay. So when you see V, like the victory, right? V pronounce wa. Yeah. Yeah. We wa. V e wa. V e we. It's like this. Okay. So now we are going to the reflections for the food. So when we take the food, we take a. take our seat you know and then everyone have this paper then we will left and right and join together like this and then we will recite this one after that we will also read the translation together 
right so first uh, you repeat after me and then later on we'll recite together okay pati sanga pati sanga yoniso yoniso pinda patang pinda patang pati sevami pati sevami neva davaya neva davaya namadhaya Namandanaya Namandanaya Navibhusanaya Navibhusanaya Yavadeva Yavadeva Imasa Imasa Kayasa Titiya, Titiya, Yapanaya, Yapanaya, Vihin Supa, Vihin Supa, Ratiya, Ratiya, Brahmacharya, Brahmacharya, Nugahaya. Iti pura nancha, Iti pura nancha, Vedanang, Vedanang, Pati hang kami, Pati hang kami, Nevancha, Nevancha, Vedanang. Na upadesami, na upadesami, yatra sami, yatra sami, bavisati, bavisati, anavajjata sa, anavajjata sa, pasu viharu sati. Okay, now we can practice together, right? Can you do that? Yeah. Yeah, right? Okay, together. Pati Sangha Yoniso Pinda Patang Pati Sevami Neva Dawaya Namandanaya Namandanaya Na vibhusanaya Yava deva Imasakayasa Titiyaya panaya Vihin suparathiya Brahma sariya nugahaya Iti Puranancha Vedanang Pati Hankami Nevancha Vedanang Na Upadesami Yatrasame Bhavisati Anavajyatasa Pasu Viharosati Again, Pati Sanka Yoniso Pinda Patang Pati Sevami Neva Dawaya Namadaya Namandanaya Navibhusanaya Yava Deva Imasa Kayasa Titiya Yapanaya 
วิหิสุปารัตยังบรมมาสารียานุกหายังอิติปุรานัญชาเวดานังปฏิหังกามิงเนวัญชาเวดานังนาอุปเดสามิยัตรสเมบาวิสติอาณาวัจจตาสัพพสุวิหารุสัตติเกิดว่ามุทันปฏิสังกายโยนิสุปิณฑปัตังปฏิเสวามิเนวัตดาวายานามดายานามันดานายานาวิบุสนายายาวเดวะอิมัสสกายัสสะทิติยาญาปนายัวิหิงสุปรัตติยัมบรัมมาสารียานุกหายัอิติเอปุรานัญชาเวดานังปฏิหังกามิเนวัญชาเวดานังนาอุปเดสามิเอตราสเมบาวิสติอาณาวัจจตาสัพพสุวิหารุสัตติโอเคดีเดียทรานสลชั่นทุกท่าน Wisely reflecting, I use this s a m s p o o d not for fun, not for pleasure, not for fattening, not for beautification, only for the nourishment and maintenance of this body, for keeping it healthy, for helping with the holy body. I m thinking thus, I shall destroy all feelings of hunger. And not produce new feelings of overeating. Thus, there will be freedom from the and living at ease. Okay, so this is the final. This time we'll do Pali and translation, then end. Right? Then we'll share the merit. Okay, together. Okay, so when we will see together, we'll have the paper. Okay, let us. Reflect. Uh, ref let, let us reflect. Uh, for the, let us reflect on food, right? So we say in Nepali, actually, p a t c h a v e k a n a in Pali. So let us reflect the food. Pati s a n k a y o n i s o ปินดาปตังปฏิเสวามิเนวัตวายานามัตายานามันดานายานาวิบุสนายายาวเดวะอิมัสสกายัสสะทิติยาญาปนาหิยังวิหิงสุปารัตยังบรัมมาชาริยานุกหายังอิติปุรานัญชาเวดานังปฏิหังกามิงเนวัญชาเวดานังนาอุปเดสามิยัตรสเมบาวิสติอาณาวัจจตาสัพพสุวิหารุสัตติ Wisely reflecting, I use this s a m s p o o d not for fun, not for pleasure, not for fattening, not for beautification. Only for the nourishment and maintenance of this body, for keeping it healthy, for helping with the holy life. Thinking thus, I shall destroy all feelings of hunger 
and not produce new feelings of variety. Thus, there will be freedom from physical discomfort and living at ease. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Very good. Everybody did very excellent, actually. So, we'll practice uh, every morning. So, this one after accepting ten percent. So, now we are going to share the merit together, please. <laughs> okay, let us share the merit together, please. May suffering ones be suffering free, and the fear strike fearless be. May the grief and shed all grief, and may all beings find relief. May all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting a space and earth, there was a nagas of mighty power, share this merit of ours. May the long protect the Buddha's dispensations. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.